G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. So, obviously doing what I do most days, I'm uh, surfing the net and trying to find out as much as I can about crypto. And I came up, uh, well not so much came up, but I found a couple of interesting stories. So this one on Cointelegraph, data shows the cheaper altcoins make higher returns myth is flawed. Now back in late 2017, this is all I was doing. That's when I originally got into cryptocurrencies. It was right at the kind of peak of when it was going off. And you could pretty much throw your money in anything and guarantee that it was going to go up. You know, 20, 30, 50% in a day sometimes uh, with ease. And when you're new to the crypto space, you're always looking for these really cheap gems, thinking, oh, if I get it at this price, that coin's going to go to $10,000 or $20,000. Realistically, it's unlikely that that will happen uh, in the short term. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Uh, I know a mate that put $400 in uh, to a coin and made $20,000 return like two weeks after it came out, three weeks after it came out. It wasn't very long. So yeah, he made ridiculous returns on that. But that's not the norm and that was that kind of uh, ICO boom that was happening at the time. And I have to say, I've uh, put my money into uh, quite a number of different coins. Uh, I have probably 30 altcoins that I purchased for under $3 because this uh, article goes on to talk about people purchasing coins under $3. I've only got about, I think maybe five coins that were over $3 and all the rest were under $3. The majority of my portfolio is in BTC followed by ETH followed by XRP, and then I've got a whole stack of different altcoins. And I'd have to say, out of my uh, altcoins, a third of them have outperformed BTC, so only a third, the other two thirds haven't. And out of the third that have outperformed BTC, probably about half of those have well and truly outperformed BTC though. Uh, my best performing coin I think is Synthetics Network and that's up about 200% from when I got it. And then next would be uh, Kyber Network, that's up 200%. And then we're looking at things like ADA, V, VeChain, uh, Carver and things like that. And again, I, only, I put small amounts into those. So, you know, I, I haven't made myself a millionaire by those in any kind of standards, but they have well outperformed Bitcoin. But all the rest of my coins, uh, I've got a couple that have uh, just kind of beaten Bitcoin. I've got some Power Ledger, and I think I picked that up for something crazy like three cents or nine cents or six cents or something like that. And that's Australian we're talking about. Uh, and so that's up about 50, 60 percent. My Bitcoin at the moment's only up around about 30 percent. So, yeah, it definitely does go to show. Uh, you know, there was a time where you could throw your money at anything and that may come again in the next uh, bull run when we get to the hyper end of it and everything's just firing, you might be able to find some cheap coin and just throw a couple of dollars into it and, you know, well outperform Bitcoin. But generally, they're the, the riskier bets and you definitely need to be careful. As I said, only a third of my altcoins have outperformed BTC. The others have not done so well. And my worst performer, I've lost about 50% of what I purchased it for. Uh, so yeah, be careful. It does pay to do your research. And obviously, I hadn't done my research uh, as well as what I thought. I thought I was getting them at a good price. But that's the way it is. I'm still learning myself, you know. I'm a little bit uh, more advanced than uh, total newbies, but obviously there's people out there then that know a lot more than me. So, yeah, be careful uh, thinking you can just find a cheap coin and you're going to put money into it and it's going to boom. Some might. You might get lucky and then you might just do some really good research and pick up some pick up on some hot tips, which is what I did as well uh, through YouTube, Twitter, uh, and just people I know. I've picked up some pretty good tips as well. Uh, and done well. But in saying that, I've also seen some other YouTubers give out their tips, jumped on these coins to just watch them dump. So yeah, be very, very careful. Uh, you got to remember a lot of the YouTubers, uh, and you could even say me included, you know, we have a, uh, I don't want to say an agenda, but if we're telling you about a coin, we probably have it and we want it to go up. Uh, like Synthetics and Kyber Network, I love it, massive fans, but they have gone up uh, quite a lot uh, in the last few months. So just be mindful of getting in. If you believe in the coin and the fundamentals and you're in it for the long haul, then it probably won't be a bad time to get in. But if you're not so sure about it and you're just looking for a quick pump, 
uh, be careful. You might lose money uh, in the short term. And look, you might even lose money in the long term. Who knows? You know, crypto is still uh, not true, uh, tried and tested, except for Bitcoin, really. I think that's proven its point. I don't think Bitcoin's ever going to go anywhere. That's going to continue to flourish. And then there might be some other coins that uh, won't be too far off. You know, XRP, there'll be a lot of XRP haters out there. But it has been around for a long time. I think it was 2009 or something. No, 2011, 2012, Ripple started. And then I think 2014 or something like that, XRP came out. So they've been around for a while. And they just keep getting new partnership after new partnership. So I would say they're probably going to be around. No guarantees, though. Likewise, Ethereum, been around for a long time, slowly starting to prove itself. Good chance that's going to be around. But outside of the top three, yeah. It's hard to say. Another one that I saw. So Peter Shift, Peter Shift, not sorry, not Shift. He's a real gold bug. He's right into gold. Has been for a long, long time, and he's always trying to pump gold. But he is quite the tr- uh, Twitter troll, sorry. And so he put this uh, little uh, tweet out, uh, and it says, "This quiz is for Bitcoin hodlers." How much longer does the price of Bitcoin have to stay below $10,000 before you will throw in the towel and sell? (laughs) Now, he's a massive Bitcoin troll, and I think he does it on purpose. That's how he gets, I would say, probably maybe a third to half of his Twitter followers, and he he makes money for having so many followers on Twitter. He's always trolling Bitcoin and lots of other cryptocurrencies and always trying to pump gold stock. But over 50%... (laughs) said they're taking it to the grave, that they wouldn't sell it uh, if it stayed under 10,000 forever. Now, I think that's probably not a true indication. I'm going to say somewhere between one and three years would be more realistic. This is just the uh, the Bitcoin uh, maxis and just people who are into cryptocurrencies, uh, and me too, wanting to stick it to Peter Schiff a little bit. Now, I believe in gold. I've invested in gold. If you want to go invest in gold, you know, have a look at it yourself. It is nearly at all-time highs, like literally all-time highs, so you just have to be careful getting into gold. But if you fundamentally believe in gold, then you know, in the long run, it might not be a bad buy. But do your own research. I'm not offering you any financial advice. But it just was very funny that, yeah, 50% plus, they're like, I'll never sell it. I honestly reckon one to three years if it hadn't moved. A lot of people would sell it and they're holding on to it because they believe it will. But Peter Schiff, well done. Funny dude. Now, something I saw here uh, was very interesting. So Ethereum is beating Bitcoin in many ways is the title uh, of this blog. So interest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, including Ethereum, is booming. Fueled by unprecedented central bank stimulus measures and rocketing demand for alternative finance. The Bitcoin price is up around 30% so far this year. Uh, and it's being left in the dust by huge gains seen by some smaller cryptocurrencies, that's for sure. Ethereum is the second most valuable cryptocurrency after Bitcoin and has almost doubled in value so far this year. And the number of active active Ethereum addresses is growing at nearly twice the rate of Bitcoin. So while Bitcoin is starting to boom and it's being adopted, Ethereum is really sort of powering ahead as well. Now, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're both sort of, you know, leveled out at the moment. Uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of price action, but Ethereum is slowly going up. I know my Ethereum is up around about 45%, and it was up a little bit higher. It was up around the 50% mark, but it's currently sitting at around 40%. And again, my Bitcoin is only at around about 30% up. And I've got uh, definitely some smaller cap cryptocurrencies that, like I said, they're up 200%. But what I found interesting was here is Ethereum active addresses, uh, active address account, uh, active address count has increased by 118% since the beginning of the year. Data from blockchain analysis firm Masari first reported uh, this into the crypto news site Decrypt. Now, meanwhile, Bitcoin's active address uh, accounts has only increased by 49%. That's still a lot. That basically means, you know, 50% there, you know, half the amount of people uh, that they had have joined, but the Ethereum, wow, 118% were still only about halfway through the year so imagine once you know things start to kick off how much that's going to build and really it's this kind of uh, reason that i got into ethereum Uh, i've got a reasonable uh, stack of ethereum reasonable for me anyway not compared to you know people who are seriously rich but i've definitely got enough that i can uh, 
stake it. So you need 32 Ethereum to stake by yourself. Uh, or if you've got less, you can still stake. You'll just have to join some pools. And I might do a video on that a little bit later because not everyone's going to be able to get 32 Ethereum. That you know, definitely costs a few dollars. I think in Ethereum at the moment is around about 250 uh, US dollars. And if you need 32 of them, well, add that up. It's not exactly cheap. But if you only have, you know, half an Ethereum or an Ethereum and you want to stake, uh, you can join pools uh, and you pull all your Ethereum together to make up the 32. But very interesting, 118%, well done to Ethereum. Hopefully they're going to roll out uh, that ETH 2.0 sometime this year. You know, it's been coming out for a really long time and it's just constant delay after constant delay. Uh, and that really is frustrating. So I, for one, am hoping that, uh, yeah, it, it gets done and we should see some price action after that. And even if it's not serious price action, at least we can finally stake it and then make some returns. The returns should be good. All right, so Bitcoin is starting to struggle. Where is it? So Bitcoin struggles uh, and this minor cryptocurrency has soared 1000% in just over 12 months. If you didn't just see before, here it is. The chain link price this week hit an all time high of $6.49 per link. Uh, per, per link token, according to data from Bitcoin and crypto exchange Coinbase, adding 60% over the last month and taking it to touching distance of top 10 most valuable cryptocurrencies. Chainlink, designed to bridge payment services and blockchain such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, was created in 2015 and offered its link tokens to investors uh, in a 2017 initial coin offering ICO at 11 cents per token and they raised over $32 million. If there's anyone out there who got into Chainlink at ICO and bought it for 11 cents, you would be absolutely laughing by now. I mean, it's, yeah, over $6 from 11 cents. Wow, that is some kind of return. That is absolutely, yeah, I'd be loving it. I've got some Chainlink and I think I'm up around, it's, I think it's close to 100%. So I've basically doubled my money in Chainlink. But yeah, I definitely didn't get into it at 11 cents. I think I was still buying it at like sort of around the $2, $3 mark. And that was Australian, so it might have been a little uh, bit less uh, in US dollars. But Chainlink, they're just going from strength to strength to strength. And yeah, it's hard to know. I don't like to do price predictions really. Uh, you know, how do we know what's going to happen in the future? And, you know, does something new come in? You know, ban protocol or something similar. That might all of a sudden take a big chunk out of that kind of market. But Chainlink, definitely in the DeFi space, you know, it's going from strength to strength. Basically, every DeFi protocol is using Chainlink and other big businesses are getting involved. So, yeah, well done to all the Chainlink, the Marines, as they call them, the Link Marines. Uh, and anyone who bought at the ICO price of 11 cents, they are cheering right now. Something else I found, Grayscale. So they uh, generally invest in a few different cryptocurrencies, but what they have done is reduce the amount of XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin that they have been buying, and they're really just kind of focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum, predominantly Bitcoin more than anything else. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can see uh, how they have been uh, purchasing the kind of levels. So 81%. They've boosted that up to 81.5%. Ethereum, though, this has been a, a, a reasonable jump. And again, it'll be from that uh, information that we saw before. 9.6 up to 11.7. So 2.1%, they've increased their amount. But as we can see, they've decreased the amount of XRP that they were buying. So they were, buy were buying 5%, down to 3.6. Bitcoin Cash was 2.8, down to 2%. And Litecoin, 1.6 to 1.2%. Litecoin has really been stagnating for a while and there, you know, not a whole lot of information coming out. You know, we're still looking into Mimble Wimble and things like that. And, you know, there was the news that they're going to link up with Atari and that's good. But, yeah, I'm really hoping Litecoin uh, gets up and yeah, running. I, I've been a fan of Litecoin for a long time and Charlie Lee. But, yeah, Litecoin has definitely gone a little bit quiet. And, yeah, hopefully once things start to, yeah, really start to pump. Litecoin, Litecoin might get some action because it hasn't been doing too much. I've actually lost money uh, in Litecoin. Not too much, probably down a couple of percent, a couple of hundred dollars still. It's a couple of hundred dollars that uh, 
essentially I don't have at the moment. Hopefully that will change and yeah, I'll make a couple hundred, if not even maybe a couple of thousand dollars would be good. So come on Litecoin. But I, Bitcoin Cash was interesting. I, I really didn't think there was too much um, adoption of Bitcoin Cash anymore. You know, it's really taken a massive drop in price. I know back in 2017, 2018, everyone was like, oh, you know, Bitcoin, not everyone, that's not true, but a lot of people were like, no, Bitcoin Cash is going to be the real Bitcoin. It's the highly adopted one. Uh, Roger Ver was, you know, getting all these uh, Bitcoin ATMs, getting pumped out and all this kind of stuff. But it just seems, uh, you know, everyone's basically reverted, reverted back to, you know, I guess what you could call the true Bitcoin. And Bitcoin Cash has really, really struggled. Yeah, and I, I didn't think there'd be too much institutional adoption with Bitcoin Cash anymore. But it seems that uh, Grayscale, they are still buying it, just not as much. Now we can go over here uh, and something I found interesting is they say it's possible that external forces are stopping Bitcoin from rallying despite on-chain strength. Yeah, I, I, they, they, I think there definitely is uh, some external forces. Uh, I, I think, you know, the big institutions that are getting into cryptocurrencies at the moment, they're not buying the market stuff. They're buying OTC. So that doesn't really affect the price too much. But at some stage it will, because usually the miners, they sell OTC and then they'll also sell to the market if there's not a whole lot of OTC going on at the moment. And so obviously if they're selling basically everything they're making uh, OTC, there's no Bitcoin and Ethereum and all the rest of it getting to the markets. And at some stage that's going to affect it. There's just going to be a, such a short supply that we're going to see quite large spikes in it. I think Grayscale, they said, has bought 150%. So that's more than what has been mined this year. 150% of all the Bitcoin that's been mined this year. So basically any Bitcoin that's been mined this year, they've bought that and then, you know, 50% more. So they're going back into, you know, Bitcoin that was mined from last year and years previous and all the rest of it. So that is interesting. And what they show down here is there's uh, a little bit of a... Uh, a graph and it comes from Glassnode and basically saying that the fundamentals are still increasing uh, and you're getting all these uh, little dots and indicators uh, in the regime one that is showing uh, you know bullish sentiment uh, and that you know there should be a spike and a boom sometime soon but again it's just that whole weight everyone's paused at the moment when it comes to Bitcoin you know altcoins they're absolutely you know pumping some of them anyway obviously not all of them but bitcoin it's just really leveled out at that kind of nine thousand dollar level and it's just waiting for whatever happens next i personally think uh we might see a bit of a dump we might go down towards the eight thousand dollar level i don't think it'll stay there for very long and then we're going to start to break out but i could be wrong we could just completely break out uh we'll have to wait and see and last but not least, DeFi boom has saved Bitcoin from plummeting. Allegedly. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, it plummeted anyway, along with all other cryptocurrencies. You know, we had the big uh, COVID uh, dip uh, and everything dropped. And then it's definitely found its way back, uh, you know, to roughly the price as it was before. We haven't quite got to that $14,000 level uh, that Bitcoin got to uh, in 2019. But we've got up around the nine ten thousand dollar mark. But something I did find quite interesting. Uh, where was it? Thought I'd highlighted it. Um, here, the largest amount of value locked in DeFi comes from Ethereum tokens. There's seven hundred and fifteen million dollars uh, of Ethereum banked up in uh, DeFi. Now, at the time of writing, it was followed by Bitcoin. Bitcoin's only 141 million. So I just thought that was interesting that they're saying DeFi has, you know, uh, helped push up the price of Bitcoin, but there really isn't that much Bitcoin locked up. $141 million worth of Bitcoin is not that much. And especially when we're talking about in comparison to Ethereum, which has 715 million. That is uh, a lot of Ethereum. And that might have a reason why Ethereum has uh, 
fared better in price uh, definitely this sort of year. Uh, you know, the whole DeFi space, it's starting to boom and I think it's only going to go from strength to strength to strength. For a while anyway, there's going to be a port, there's going to be a point where it's really oversold and again, we've got to that massive hype point uh, and then unfortunately things will pop. Uh, they are much like a bubble. Not that it'll pop and that'll be it, it'll go to nothing, but it will definitely retrace back to, I guess, what people will call fair value. Now, some people might say that uh, certain DeFi, maybe even a lot of DeFi, aren't even at fair value yet. They're still highly undervalued. Other people might say they're completely overvalued, but my personal opinion uh, is DeFi, uh, it's going to be the thing that's really going to uh, yeah, push the market uh, in this cycle. Again, that cycle that we had in the kind of 2017, that was all ICO stuff. Everyone was just jumping in and buying any ICO. Uh, and in the end, pretty much anything that come out would pump. It'd make millions of dollars. But then it got to you know the point where everything popped and it all came back down. And the projects that were legit, you know, things that made it through uh, that market, Chainlink, uh, Kyber Network and things like that, you know, they stuck around, they're still here and that's why you're seeing their value go back up again. But there were a ton of projects uh, that basically just popped and disappeared and never come back and will never be seen again. Uh, unfortunately, kind of scam tokens, I guess, would be one way to think of it. People have got in, made some money, they never really thought that they were going to stick around, they were just there for the money grab and then they nicked off. Uh, and that's pretty sad and, uh, and disappointing to be honest but you know that's the space and a lot of people will try and convince you oh it's just the crypto is so bad and notorious for it look it definitely has a reputation for it but it's no different to any other market out there every other market has scams and things that go on uh, there were some uh, articles a while ago that they suspect that half of China's gold is fake well, the gold's real, but what it is is lead bars then coated in gold. Now, it's hard to know because no one's going to get into China and be able to see the gold that they've got. Uh, but I remember hearing about that and I was thinking, well, even gold, uh, you know, there's scams going on in gold. And then, you know, we talk about fiat money, our actual cash money. How many scams are there going with traditional fiat money? There's tons of it out there. God. Everyone, you know, it doesn't matter what industry is, there's scams in all of them. So don't get caught up in that hype and hysteria that crypto is just full of scams. Uh, there's definitely plenty of scams out there. And the last video I did that I did yesterday uh, spoke about that. But not everything's a scam. You just got to do a little bit of research, you know, get some advice from some people that have been uh, in the game for a little while. And again, you can definitely watch YouTube. There's some really, really uh, good people out on YouTube that provide really good uh, content, but never take just one person's word for it. Like if I tell you something's great, don't go, oh, well, he says it's great, so it must be. Have a look at some other YouTubers and see what they say. And then get onto Twitter. Uh, and then, you know, just uh, do some Google searches and all the rest of it. Uh, learn how to read charts, so get on the charts, see if they've got Facebook pages, see if they're on Telegram, see if they're still active and if they're building new products and things like that. Uh, and then if you're looking at a project and you can't find any of that, well, it's probably dead in the water and it's probably not going to do anything. But that doesn't mean it won't pump. Even dead products can pump sometimes. Uh, they're called pump and dumps. And if you don't know what they are, do a bit of research on them because you don't want to get caught up in a pump and dump. They definitely hurt, particularly uh, if you get in at the wrong time. If you get in at the right time and get out, well, you might be laughing, but that uh, that is a risky move. Anyway, that's it for me today. I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you made some gains today, and I'll see you next time.